Let's recap the Spurs, the loss to the Magic, and put Wimbayama in the spotlight. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Hey, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs right here on the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. And, uh, yeah, welcome back. And you guys are the everydayers. We appreciate you subscribing to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. Ken's 5 Plus app goes on and on. Just pick a platform. We are there for you every single day. Hey, what are we talking about today? We're going to give some quick takeaways from the Spurs loss. Yes, another loss uh, on the season, this time to the Orlando Magic at home. And then we're going to bring in our guest, Tom Petrini, my colleague at Ken's 5. And we're going to put a Wimbayama in the spotlight and then ask if Jeremy Sohan was snubbed for the uh, Rising Stars sophomore team. That's coming up next right here on Lockdown Spurs. But about the gloss to the Magic. Yeah, the Spurs could not pull out a home win. Losing to the Magic, uh, 108 to 98. Yeah, they got it close at the fourth period, but we're going to be discussing that in a few seconds. They give you some quick takeaways, three of them from the Spurs' loss to the Magic. Takeaway number one, turnovers. This is a young team that cannot afford turnovers. And lo and behold, they certainly did that. And more importantly, remember that third quarter they had been winning of late? Yeah, they cost, they tur- coughed the ball up several times in the third. They got outscored in the third by Orlando, 34 to 21. The third quarter was disastrous. They were still in there at halftime, just within uh, 10 points, but they came apart in the third quarter. Again, Orlando outscores them 34 to 21. Yeah, takeaway number one leads into takeaway number two, incomplete game. They cannot play 48 minutes. Again, this is something that a very young team like the Spurs need to learn, and they have not learned to put together a 48-minute game consistently. They've been doing better at that lately, but against the Magic, and look, the Magic is a tough team. They're long, they're tough, they're big, you know, disrupts them, but nevertheless, they just could not put together 48 minutes. That cost them a uh, W here at the Frost Center. And takeaway number three, you know, I, I got to end this on a positive note, everybody. We can't just bash the Spurs. Uh, give them credit for the fourth quarter. You know, they rallied. Uh, they uh, actually outscored the Magic 26-17, to 17, holding the Magic to 17 points in the final frame and getting uh, key turnovers. Blake Wesley was a, definitely a big spark in that fourth period. Deva Vassell, Trey Jones. The list goes on and on. They started knocking down threes. By the way, uh, they were not shooting the ball well from the three line. But, hey, look, a little too little too, little too late. Uh, but yet the Spurs made a game of it, took the Magic down to the wire. Unfortunately, what I say about takeaway number one, the turnovers, yeah, a pair of costly turnovers down the stretch doomed the Spurs. And that's what all she wrote for San Antonio. The Spurs fall to 10 and 38. They'll next face the Pelicans here at the Frost Center, uh, part of their seven-game homestand. All right, coming up next is my colleague at Ken's 5, Tom Petrini. He and I are going to discuss Wimbayama at the, well, his rookie season midway point, and then ask if Jeremy Sohan was snuffed from the sophomore team at the Rising Star event. Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest, most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. They are the easiest, most exciting way to play DFS, and it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Look, they got it all at Price Picks. Uh, it's simple. It's convenient. It's user friendly. You can make picks and submit those entries in less than 60 seconds. They got quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes Price Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Hey, they even offer Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this basketball season. And don't forget about those weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide more value. Hey, look, I have it. You should have it, too. Want to have some fun. Just have some fun this NBA season. Go get the Price Picks app right now. You want to go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA. Use code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA. The code is LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks, 
Daily fantasy sports made easy. Hey, San Antonio, do you stay up late last night catching the end of the Spurs game? You need yourself a pick-me-up? Look no further than Muslinger's drive through Coffee. Muslinger's is locally owned independent coffee shop, and they're proud to make delicious coffee for the community. They do it fast and friendly so you can get on with your day. Whether you're in the mood for a latte, cold brew, Red Bull infused lightning bolt, whatever you want, they have the drinks for every taste. They also have a wide selection of dairy alternatives, low calorie options, caffeine free drinks for those who just want to take it easy. And we're not done there. They got mini donuts. They have a friendly staff. They are conveniently located in San Antonio. You want to go there right now. They have signature drinks like the OG OJ. They have uh, the Sub Zero in honor of Frank Harris of UTSA. They got it all. You want to go to Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee immediately if you're in San Antonio. Swing by Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee for a tasty and convenient caffeine fix. They're located at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. That's near 281 and 1604. Open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Don't forget to follow them on socials X, Threads, Facebook, TikTok. The list goes on and on. Go to Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee right now in San Antonio. Why? Because life is too short for bland coffee. And we are back right here on Locked On Spurs. Making his way back here is my colleague at Ken's Five. He is Tom Petrini. Follow him on X at Real Tom Petrini. Showing off the newly shorn head. I love it. I love the look, though, man. You look so. I it's, think you should have gone with this for a long time ago. It's not because I'm losing my hair, because I'm not. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Plenty of bald kings out there. Shout out Manu Ginobili there you go. among them. I just want to be more aerodynamic at sports. Curling, for example, oh, when you're training wow. for the Olympics, you know, you see, every slide. every millimeter of uh, yeah. air resistance, you know, could well, be, well, it you could are, be the difference between, yeah. you know, silver and gold. So, well, you are a fan of F, uh, you are a fan of F1. So, right. But I got to I got to wear a helmet when I'm in the car. So it's, you know, non-factor. But curling, no helmet, even though no it's helmet. dangerous. Ice is slippery. But, you know, enough about me. You know, I always wanted to try that just to do the sweepy thing. The oh, sweep. it's fun, dude. Dude, yeah. seriously, come up to Austin. There's a curling rink. There's a curling rink in Austin. A, I've been. I People think I'm kidding about this. I've been curling. I'm not actively training for the Olympics yet, although I'll yeah, see how bored I get. I don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, <laughs> we'll look for that next adventure from Tom Petrini to talk about that on Lockdown Spurs when he makes his return in a future episode. But – it is time to put Wimby in the microscope. He is p- p- past the halfway point of his rookie season. Uh, and, um, you know, before we hit record, Tom, we were we were thinking about this. Well, obviously, it's going to be nothing but praise. You know, he's earned it. You know, but there are some negatives. We'll get into that. But let's just get the obvious out of the way. I mean, living up to the billing of the number one pick, generational, all those big adjectives they used before he came into the league, he is all that and more. What has been standing out for you from him, especially now we're at the halfway point? Well, I think one big thing that we're seeing from Victor Wembanyama right now, really the whole month of January, um, has been that he is the rock of this team. Mm -hmm. He is, uh, every night he has to be a 20 and 10 guy. Mm -hmm. um, And he has been. I mean, you, you look at the entire month of January here, uh, and you'll remember right right at the beginning, uh, Milwaukee game on the fourth, mm-hmm. uh, and that's when he said every every game is a statement now, which yep. was a bar, by the way. Uh, the whole month of January, twenty four points, ten rebounds, three assists, three blocks, almost a steal per game, shooting fifty one percent from the floor, thirty two percent from three, and eighty two percent on free throws one game in the whole month where he did not score 20 points. And that was the first career triple double 16, Mm -hmm. 12 and 10 in 21 minutes against (laughs) the Pistons. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, yeah. And, and a lot of this on a minutes restriction, um, which really got sort of lifted. And Mm -hmm. now he's, now he's able to play on, on back to backs. Uh, They won back to back games for the first time all season. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, in that month, five Spurs wins. So, you know, you're, you're looking at a guy who obviously the pieces around him are changing a bit. He's playing center more since mm-hmm. early December, Trey Jones starting at point yep. guard for, for a lot of this stretch. Um, but also 
in this month, he has, I think, really refined his approach. Um, in the in the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. it was a lot of floating around, picking his spots, just trying stuff, sure, uh, and and seeing what works. And now he's uh, it's less trying stuff and more knowing what works for him. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and it's a really impressive step in terms of him maturing his game. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just want to say, you know, we with the OKC game recently, the the whole Chet Holmgren Rookie of the yeah. Year thing. Um, Victor Wembanyama this month is a lock to be uh, the first Spur in just about twenty years to win Rookie of the Month. There you go. It's been twenty years. It's trivia. I'll, I'll let's let the fans think at home if they're listening or in their cars. Who who won Rookie of the Month for the Spurs in two thousand four? Jeff, do you know? I do, but like I can see his face in my head, but I can't put the name on in my head now. You might see I, you might see the hair too, hair that I once had. Yeah, I I <laughs> you once called me Ben Oudre because I had the yeah I had the side shaved and the top yep. blonde with like a little blonde, hot yeah. knot going on. There you go. Uh, oh. But yeah, Bino, be my hair Bino, for real. Yeah, Ben Udre. I mean, like, he, but he Victor has this month locked. Uh, yeah. Chet, fantastic player, having a fantastic year. I I think still has a good case for rookie of the year. But if this is the way that things trend, right, for the rest of the season, mm-hmm. it's not going to be close by the end of it. No, no, uh, no. Because in, my, in, my, in my opinion, I think it's already been a lot. It's a lock for him. I, I think Wimby's got it now. There's no way he can lose it. I, I right. think I mean, barring injury or sort of knock on wood, but that's about it. That seems to be the consensus in San yeah. Antonio, right? Like the people who watch Victor Wembanyama play every night are like, how could it be anybody else? Right. Um, and people who are m- more around the league that I have listened to that I, you know, respect their opinions are very high on Chet. And like until recently, you know, they've been like, they, they think this is a his to lose because his impact on winning has been like, that's important that we, we can't discount. It's not just that he's putting up good numbers on a great team. It's that he's the reason that team went from okay to being like, wow, they're really good, you know, or one of them. Um, But in the month of January where Victor Wembanyama averaged 24 points, Chet Holmgren scored more than 24 points one time, you know? Yeah. Like he's scored under uh, 10 points. Uh, five five times here, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and scored over twenty, just three times in the mm-hmm. month of January. Yeah. Uh, he's shooting worse. That's been a that's been a big point in the whole debate between the two. Uh, is the efficiency and this month, uh, efficiency wise, he's basically the same as Victor. Fifty one percent from the floor, thirty two percent from three. Yeah. Worse yeah. from from the free throw line. Not yeah. even close. Uh, and I'm interested to see how that, like, if if those lines keep going in the opposite directions, it's going to be very clearly victors by the end of this. Absolutely, um, yeah. And you you got to wonder if maybe, you know, perhaps Chet is hitting his rookie wall right now, and perhaps it wouldn't be either he busts through it or he ain't going to even counter that this upcoming this is in his rookie season. But and as much praise as we're giving Victor, and he deserves it, you know, you know, if you put on the scale, a lot more praise than negatives. But there is still stuff that he needs to work on. And for me, Tom, I I know you mentioned this before we hit record, but personally for me, it's the turnovers. Mm -hmm. It's still an issue with him. He was one of the big reasons why the Spurs lost to the Wizards, a game they had no business losing. I mean, I was at the game. In that fourth quarter, I I was just sitting there at our seat because we share the Ken's five seat. And I was like, are they really doing this? Like, is this really happening? And it's Victor and Devin and all these guys turning the ball over. So that could just have been maybe, you know, still that adjustment period the team is going through, getting used to him and him getting used to the team. And we're still seeing players lob the ball up for him, thinking, okay, yay, but it's a little too high. It sails too far. But um, turnovers is, to me, one of the biggest issues I have that he still needs to work on, Tom. And I think that just speaks to the inexperience, right? Yeah. Um, so it's funny. Somebody – asked me somebody who saw the score of the wizards game but didn't mm-hmm. watch asked me about it you know was it a good game was it fun to watch at least and because you know sometimes bad teams can get together mm-hmm. and play a fun game um 
it it wasn't fun for me for me watching. Uh, I I described it as like brain damage basketball, and my friend was like, well, "What does that mean?" And I was like, "Well, it's a game that you watch, and you get the sense that everybody playing somehow has brain damage, and then you yourself, <laughs> as you're watching it, you get brain damage because of how stupid it is. Yeah, <laughs> like on both ends of the floor, it was it was one of the dumbest games of basketball I've ever seen, and and then that in that setting that's when I saw Victor sort of falling into bad habits that he's gone away from, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, hunting like bad mid range shots and just, he looked off balance and not Mm -hmm. like in a getting pushed around in the paint way. It was more of a, you know, not knowing quite where to be and what to do way. Like it was the most lost I've seen this whole team. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I, I truly like, Obviously, the Spurs are are not very good this year, and they're very young, and they make a lot of mm-hmm. mistakes. Uh, but I think the Wizards share some blame in this because, like, the Spurs are a funny team, but like the Wizards are hilarious. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like Jordan Poole <laughs> and Kyle Kuzma, yeah, decent players, but like far more entertaining to me because of like the silly things that they do on a basketball right. court. Like there was a yeah. moment in the previous wizards game earlier this month where, uh, you know, Victor got a lob, he finished it. And then he's going to high five, whoever tossed him the lob and Jordan Poole just gets yeah, in there and that. breaks up the high five. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, like I've seen guys block shots after the yeah. whistle before. And that's funny, but this guy's hating on a different level, you know? And yeah, like, yeah, it's it's pure comedy and so and i think that it got a that game got a little like aauified uh yeah. and just and and the spurs have been so that was what was so disappointing about it and pop said like you know this is the first time in a while where we've looked young we've looked immature mm-hmm. um we beat ourselves yeah they did and um and it's disappointing because especially with you know victor's uh surge here and Trey Mm -hmm. Jones running point. Um, We've seen a lot better structure from everybody. We've seen Victor pretty much not take any mid range shots at all, unless he has to, he's either letting it fly from three on a better efficiency or getting into the paint. And, um, and yeah, this, the, that wizards game, I'm still like, I'm still recovering. I still feel like I still recover, he says. sick from that. Just <laughs> watching that as a person who likes good yeah. basketball, it was like, Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, it was. And, and, you know, you know, just to circle back to the turnover issues that he, that he's still dealing with, you know, this is the, he's averaging right now 3.6 in the month of January. Uh, so, I mean, I understand everybody we're in February now, but for last month, I assume 3.6, you know, this is the second highest he's had since his first month in October, which is at 4.8. Um, so he did you know, though. I, I got to say in that, in that wizards game, I, I like that they're throwing the ball to him more, you mm-hmm. know, uh, it definitely seems to be the case. They're trying to throw more lobs. Jeremy Sohan threw a lob that was a little too high for victory. Women, yeah, I'm a crazy. I know. Yeah, and Victor caught it as he was jumping out of bounds over the oh, baseline yeah. and threw it back over his mm-hmm. head, and it just landed boop under the basket, and Trey Jones picked it up for a layup. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm still not sure how he did it without his feet hitting the ground first. They may have, I don't know, uh, but like to see to see somebody that size move that way, it's still mm-hmm. like it's still every game we're seeing stuff that like like I jump in my seat. I'm like, oh my, like like yeah. I. I make a sound that wakes up the dogs and it's like, oh yeah, this is, he's always going to do stuff like that. <laughs> like he's, yeah, he he's, is. he's got a career full of just doing stuff like that. every and, single and, and, and the, and the accolades still coming in, you know, we all knew he was going to be part of the rising star challenge. That was, nobody should have been surprised by that. He, he's getting in, um, you know, the rookie of the month award should be his name on that. When the NBA does make the official announcement. You talk about his month of January stats. Now, let's just look at the last three games before last night's game versus Orlando. So he was averaging 22.7 points per game, 11 rebounds, 4.7 assists, 1.7 steals, 2.3 blocks. This is where the turnovers are, though, 5.7 the last three before the Orlando game, and then uh, shooting 46%. The three-point shot, I like that you take it, Victor, but sometimes I think you need to stop. You know, if it's not falling for you uh, this month, 
I'm sorry, last month in January, 31% um, heading into that Orlando game. So although he is a phenomenal player, he is, you know, he's living up to the billing, you know, but we have to remember he's still a rookie and there's still areas of his game that he still needs to work on. And it's a shame think- that Joel Embiid busted 70 points on the Spurs. <laughs> otherwise, I think that his performance with Philly is getting so overlooked right now. Oh, yeah. No, he, he was yeah. he was great in that game. And I think as far as the threes go, obviously, he. I, I think as his career goes, teams are going to want him to shoot the three. Like defenses are going to want, prefer for him to shoot the three than get all seven foot four of him to the basket, right? That's just going to be the preference for teams. Right. So I like that he's showing improvement with a three point shot. I like that he's not afraid to take it. And I, I like that. I like the different ways they're getting him those opportunities to try because he, he's been effective, pretty effective off the dribble. Uh, guy, smaller guys, Trey Jones has been setting a lot of screens for him. They're inverting the pick and roll. They're doing a five one pick and roll sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's Vassell setting the screen and then scramming away. Uh, and it's just a quick little like jab to the nose of the defense, and then boom, he's he's up mm-hmm. with the shot. Um, and so, definitely not his most effective shot right now. But in this season, especially, I think he should keep trying to shoot those. Absolutely. All right. Hey, we mentioned earlier that Wimby is going to the Rising Stars uh, game out for the lost. I'm sorry, the All Star game in Indianapolis. But was somebody snubbed off the sophomore team? Huh. We're going to be talking about that and more. But before we go to the next uh, 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 segment, uh, Tom, I'm assuming solid A for Victor at the halfway point of his rookie campaign. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, 100%. All right. So when we get back, we're going to be asking if Jeremy Sohan was snubbed from the sophomore team for the Rising Stars Challenge and more. That's next on Lockdown Spurs. Hey, before we continue our chat, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. You want to go to FanDuel right now. It's Super Bowl time. It's right around the corner. What better way to celebrate than with FanDuel, America's number one sports book? Look, if you're like me, Super Bowl is, yeah, it's a great event, especially you can watch it from your couch, having your friends over, getting those snacks, you know, whatever it is, Super Bowl is always a good time. So when you're watching from the couch and hopefully seeing your favorite team play in the Super Bowl, why not have some more fun with FanDuel? FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Now, you can not only bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers, listen up. You want to join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. You heard that right. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanduel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Tom Petrini. Follow him on X at Real Tom Petrini. And uh, yeah, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, Tom, but the nerd wall has gotten bigger. Yeah, I yeah. you it's it's let me, starting let me, let me give you to the full, become a bit of a collage screen. here. Let me give yeah. you the screen. So we have Cobra Commander, you know. Word, word, yeah, word, 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 word. Now, this is one of my favorite new additions. This is like the multiverse crossover that I, I always dreamed of, and I never thought it would come to true. This is actually one punch man taking on Goku. So I, is, I know is that, I don't know, is that I don't a, know if you're is that an but, Optimus Prime jump man next to it? <laughs> I thought you saw it already, but yes, Prime is dunking on me, Tom. That's I'm getting dunked on by Prime. I I'll be honest, you know, I I don't think that uh, I don't think that's a bad thing if you get you know, dunked I, on by Prime. Obviously, <laughs> he's no, and obviously he has more more titles than Megatron. <laughs> but you know, in their prime, <laughs> I'm oh, I see what you're um, doing there. Ah, I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> All oh, right. No. Now that Tom hit us with that, uh, let's go to talk about our next topic, and that is Jeremy Sohan. Uh, last year, his rookie season, hey, he was part of NBA All Star Weekend with the Rising Stars Challenge. Good for him. Yay. Way to go, Jeremy. But this year, the, the NBA announced the sophomore team, and unfortunately, he was not on it. Uh, snubbed or not, Tom, where do you land on this? So, 
initially when I saw this and I thought about it, because mm-hmm. I mean the, that draft class really, really awesome and cool. Mm-hmm. A lot of really talented, deserving players who are having great sophomore seasons. Uh, and I'm looking at the list, you know, Bancaro, Jalen yeah. Duran, Jaden Ivey, Kessler, Benedict Matherin, Keegan Murray, Shaden Sharp, oh. Jabari Smith Jr., Jalen yeah. Williams. Like, that's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome hoop. All of those guys, super-duper talented. Uh, and and so I'm like, all right, I, I, underst- I understand that part. And then I see Dyson Daniels and – yeah. I mean, no disrespect to Dyson Daniels. He's a talented player. You know, the the Pelicans are pretty good. He's playing, like, okay. Uh, but there's, like, not a single statistical category where Jeremy isn't better than him. And also, I mean, you know, like, they're, they're, both, they're both good defenders, but I, I would take Jeremy. Uh, yeah. and, and, like, it's not even like it's – particularly close numbers wise like jeremy is averaging 11 and a half points per game uh 44 from the floor 37 mm-hmm. from three 79 percent from the free throw and dyson daniels 5.4 points per game uh 42 from the floor 28 from three 65 percent uh free throws jeremy more rebounds more assists uh not as many steals uh, but like, it's not like he's a slouch on defense, right? Mm-hmm. Like he he's super fun. Uh, the only thing that I can think of that makes sense for, for why this happened is they were afraid that he was going to fight somebody at all-star weekend. And they <laughs> thought that that would like not be the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. They They're were, they were right, like, yeah. they, this guy is already pissing off way too many people, way too much. Like, like yeah. we can't have like a physical altercation yeah. in the rising it's stars. Fun game. times, not too many hands times. Yeah. Too many valuable skinny men in that game to have Jeremy Sohan just yeah. running around and bumping people and playing tough defense. They they <laughs> they didn't want that dog in that fight, you know? You, you, you know, I thought about this, you know, you know, when I was getting the topics ready for us and I and I go to the Jeremy snub thing and okay, you know, you know, not having, you know, you know, an erratic season. But how much do you think him starting point guard and how that threw him off completely may have impacted this. I mean, perhaps that I mean, could be it. I, I think I don't I don't think that whoever makes these decisions is thinking about like, oh, he played point guard and he wasn't very good. Yeah. Uh and he so then he shouldn't be in the rising stars game. I think maybe the impact on his statistics, but then again, we said like the his statistics are better. So like yeah, what still better, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's a huge deal. It's kind of annoying. Um, I think it's probably very annoying if you're Jeremy Sohan, uh, and I love that personally. I would. I honestly like. You know, I I want what's best for for Jeremy. I think he's a, a promising young man. I think he's he's mm-hmm. uh, going after it, getting things his own way. I, I respect his game. I, I respect him as a person. Uh, but like, you know. Pissed off Jeremy, probably pretty good. You know, like I, I, I don't, I don't mind that he's getting a little bulletin board material. You know, me, me neither. No, no. I, 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 I think I next time he sees thing. Dyson Daniels, he's gonna try to shove him in a locker. You know, and and I'm it's and that. again, no disrespect <laughs> to Dyson <laughs> yeah. Daniels, who seems like a fine young man, and that may be what the NBA wanted. They, they could, they just couldn't handle bad boy Jeremy Sohan. You yeah. know smacking opponents on the butt after he makes a good play on him and going to the yeah. going or, to the bench trying to get a high five. <laughs> or maybe it was Pop telling them, you know what, Jeremy, you're going to be playing against your teammate, Wimby. You don't need to be what we see getting feisty with other players on your right. own teammate. So why don't maybe, you just set maybe, this one out? Maybe Pop made the call. He was, he yeah. was like, yo, listen, Adam, I know Jeremy's having a great season, but also, one, I don't want Vic or Chet to get hurt just because he's a rambunctious – young yeah. man and two you know it'll piss him off and that'll be fun and adam yeah. silver's like all right bet dyson gotcha. Man, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Dyson, you're in yeah yeah I, it's unfortunate i really thought that sohan was gonna make it uh well you know way ahead look we, like i said we all knew that when was gonna do it you know yay we, you know, nobody should be surprised by this but i said okay well you know nobody's really talking about sohan on the sophomore team you know that that's gonna be cool 
will have well, I thought potentially three representatives for the Spurs. You know, Wimby at the Rising Stars, Wimby at the Skills Challenge, Don Barlow at the G League All Star Game, and then Sohan. I said, okay, well, maybe be good representation. But hey, you you know what? You, you can't win them all. I'm pretty sure Sohan will say, okay, well, you know, let me just rest up. You know, he's look NBA players still go to the event, still go to the event. You know, as fans, so you know you'll you'll likely see him in in the stands. By the way, I spoke to Don Barlow. You know about his G League uh, All Star selection. Guess what he told me? He said he's never ever, even as a fan, even before he became a pro, has gone to an All Star event ever. Love that. And I was a little surprised by that. You know, you you think like, hey, you know, he's in the G League, you know, in college, you know, you know, overtime elite, he would have gone, you know, something. No, no, he said he's going for the first time, just completely. It's it's really awesome. Yeah. And, and quick shout out to Don Barlow. I know, I know we're wrapping up soon, but mm-hmm. Don Barlow, uh, in this stretch where Zach Collins has been sort of sidelined mm-hmm. um, and also, you know, not really super effective hitting shots or, or defending the rim, um, Don Barlow, I think, has made a bit of a case for himself to be like, hey, I could, mm-hmm. I could be a productive backup center here. Um, and him and Blake Wesley, too. Shouts Blake Wesley. Uh, yep. The, the G League as a path for development, because um, both of those guys at the end of last year, beginning of this year, you wa- you watched them and you were like, but Barlow's growth was evident summer league, you know, with the shooting, mm-hmm. with stuff like that. Thought, yeah. But but both of them, you were like, man, these guys are super athletic. They're crazy powerful. They're, they're raw, though. Their games are raw. Mm-hmm. And if they can refine that, if they if they can, you know, figure out how to play team basketball at a high level, then that would be really cool. And you're still, you're seeing the beginning of it now. So, yeah, mm-hmm. really cool to watch. All right. Well, there you have it. All right. Um, so with that being said, we want to hear from you all. What do you think about Wimby so far at his halfway point of his rookie season? We we get it. We know it's glowing remarks, but we still want to hear it. Uh, you want to let Tom know what you think about his takes and your thoughts as well on Wimby at Real Tom Petrini on X. And do you think Sohan was snubbed? Do you think he should have been there? Uh, you, you know, let him know as well. And you can subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast from iTunes, Spotify, Ken's Five Plus app. That still freaks me out, Tom, when I see you and I on the Ken's Five Plus app. I'm like, is huh? It's like, weird. That, that's us. That's us. It's, it's always on in the newsroom too. So yeah. sometimes it's like, ah. <laughs> Just re- like, realize you're it. on TV. Yeah. It's fun. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, check it out there. Download that Ken's 5 Plus app. And we'll be back tomorrow with the Vin Dog himself, Vinny Vincetta. Yeah. He's going to be joining us to wrap up Woo-hoo. the week here. Well, yeah, exactly. We're going to be discussing that Vegas odd thing about LeBron in San Antonio. Yeah. You know, we'll get. Let's just say Vinny was like this when he told me about it. He was like, but we'll get thumbs, his thumbs anyway. down for the audio only listeners. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that'll be a good episode. And uh, Tom will be back soon. Um, we'll bring you on uh, in the coming weeks, especially during the all star break, you know, because there's going to be a lot of time gaps there. So Tom will definitely be back. So again, follow him on X at Real Tom Petrini. And by the way, I am I am impressed. I am impressed. I know I know you're a nerd, you're a geek like me, but then there's Jeff who's like way up here. Super um, geek. Super, super geek. Geeky. I'm impressed that you knew that that was one punch and Goku. I was surprised. I, I, was I impressed. didn't I didn't you Oh, I thought you me. did know. Oh, okay. No. I recognize no. next to it. I know Goku. One punch yeah, man I've heard of I haven't tapped into yet. But maybe. Okay. You know what? You know what? I might maybe, be very maybe, bored. You know, so. you know what? You know, let me raise the camera. In between curling time. sessions. You might appreciate it more because he's also bald. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. It's like the episode (laughs) of Seinfeld where Elaine's dating that guy. Not bald. I just just shave my head. I just just shave my head. The the lady's like how it feels doing this. You know, now I'm going to be like this. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I got a full thick head of hair and sometimes I'm like, I hate this. But yeah, no, hmm. it's, it's really thick heads of hair are not good. Nobody likes that. Mm-mm. It's a pain. It's a pain. I mean, get a haircut almost every two, every other week or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. not fun. No, at it's all. thick and full and healthy looking. No, 
No, no, bad idea. Yeah, bad, bad idea. <laughs> well, you wear a hat all the time. You're embarrassed. Exactly. No, actually, I wear this because I just don't want to get ready for the show. I'm like, throw on whatever. That's good enough. That's the other thing. This is really yeah. easy. I don't have to worry about, like, if the wind's flapping it about. I, yeah. I just, it looks the same old. All right. Again, he is real Tom Petrini on X. Follow him right now. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. You guys are the everydayers. You know who's coming back or uh, what's going to come on tomorrow. And by the way, sneak peek for next week, we got a returning guest. Dr. Ryan McCorkle will be back. Uh, he's been absent for a while, but we got him back. So look forward to that and so much more. And Locked On Sports Today, that's a new 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Yeah, all the Locked On shows from Locked On NBA shows, NFL shows, MLB, NHL, pick it. 24-7 streaming on YouTube. Go subscribe to it now. Locked On Sports Today. So for Tom one punch man Petrini I am Jeff Garcia we're gonna put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs